Hello and welcome to the Erlang Solutions webinar. My name is Mladen Milicic and I'm the VP for the EMEA region here at Erlang Solutions. Today's webinar represents a continuation of a series of webinars we have been running across topics of interest in the world of Erlang and Elixir and dealing with solutions based on these programming languages. Now today we will be hearing specifically about the latest incarnation of Mongoose IM. Uh, more precisely speaking, it's 2.0 version. As many of you will know, Mongoose IM is of course a full stack, real time, mobile messaging platform. It has earned a particular reputation as an immensely scalable XMPP server and its latest 2.0 release brings a very sharp focus on mobile. Now, Mongoose IM 2.0 specifically supports several key features of the XMPP protocol. And with extended REST API, MuckLite, and PubSub uh, functionalities, Mongoose IM opens up a wide new range of possibilities in real-time application space. If we have any technical issues during what is a live event, then please excuse us and we'll obviously try and uh, get back on top of them as quickly as we can. But to start by telling you a bit about Erlang Solutions, we are a products and services orientated company devoted entirely to the Erlang and Elixir programming languages. We work with organizations and individuals using these languages. We do our best to help evolve them and to support people and businesses using them. Our headquarters are in London. We have offices in Stockholm, Krakow, Budapest, San Francisco and Buenos Aires. Uh, we run projects that span industries and the globe itself. We develop Erlang and Elixir based products and some of those include Wombat OAM, our monitoring and management technology, uh, Megaload, our load testing tool, and React, uh, which is well known as the key value and time series distributed database. I'm really pleased to say um, our speakers today are Nicola Verite, uh, who is the Mongoose IM product owner and Ludwig Bukowski, who is a Mongoose IM developer. And they together will be telling us uh, everything you need to know about uh, 2.0 in particular. Uh, please allow me to finish by saying you are most welcome to post questions throughout the duration of the webinar by using the chat facility on the webinar's interface. Our speakers, Nicola and Ludwig, will do our best to um, answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the webinar together with me. If any questions do go unanswered, then you're most welcome to raise them via email. You can use the following address for that purpose, webinar at erlang-solutions.com. That's webinar at erlang-solutions.com. Following the webinar, if you're interested in learning a bit more about Mongoose IM, or would like to establish whether it could be a solution for the challenges your own business may be facing, then by all means, uh, feel free to contact me directly. My email address will be displayed in one of the final slides of today's presentation. Uh, having said that, I would now like to hand over to Nicola Verite, who will be glad to start us off. Thank you, Mladen. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, so here we go. This is today's webinar, and we are going to show you how this messaging platform can offer you the power of XMPP with the simplicity of a REST API, but much more as well. So as Mladen introduced, we are Ludwig and Nicola. Um, first, let us introduce you to the plan of this discussion. We will introduce what Mongoose IAM is, and then we will dive into the features offered by the version 2.0.0. REST API, MacLite, PubSub, and Wombat OAM plugins. Here we go. What is mongoose IM? Well, first, a mongoose is a little furry animal. But mongoose IM uh, is with IM, which means instant messaging. Instant messaging or chat or mobile messaging. You call it the way you want. Um, some expressions may sound a little bit old school, but still the same thing. Basically, we are offering one-to-one -one group chat and everything in the back end. Here are some uh, applications that runs on Mongoose IM. For example, bottom left is Grinder, an application for dating. 
you see here a list of conversation on the first screenshot and second screenshot the conversation itself with pictures then a second application that is moving that is an open source application runs on the web the first screenshot is a social content it's a micro blog the second screenshot is a conversation the third screenshot is the more the tablet view sorry or the laptop view it's a much much wider screen and on the top right you could see conversations which is another application another open source application available on android likewise you see the list of conversations and then the conversation itself uh, that is a group chat so what is mongozem it's also a platform as you can see uh, it's a platform that is based on the XMPP protocol and philosophy. Also, we are offering a REST API. Uh, the platform is designed as a whole. It's designed consistently so that you don't have to ask whether a feature is implemented in one component or another. When a feature is delivered, it's delivered on all the components. So let's dive into the components. You have the Mongoose IM server, then two interfaces, the XMPP interface and the REST interface. So for the XMPP interface, you have two uh, mobile libraries for iOS and Android. We will detail that a bit later. And for the REST API, likewise, you have libraries uh, which are available. These are third-party open source libraries that we are contributing to. At the bottom, you will see Wombat OAM, which we will detail later in this discussion as well. And on the right, you have Escalus, which is an XMPP Erlang client for functional testing. Uh, some gray square, uh, may, maybe some components in the future. Icicle is an uh, ICE server, which enables uh, VoIP, and Platypus is a push notification system. Sorry. So, Mongozaim platform is available on-premise or hosted. On-premise means you can install that in-house, in your own servers, or in your cloud. Hosted means that we can handle the hosting and the management for you. Uh, so we deliver that platform for mobile applications, also for web applications, but let's not forget the Internet of Things, because the power of XMPP lies in the connectivity between humans and machines. Uh, so here are more in details the components. Let's name them. So Mongozaim, the server, that's the first component, the central piece. Then the iOS libraries. On the XMPP front, you have XMPP framework, uh, coded in Objective-C, and that's used in Chat Secure. Uh, Jamie is coded by Inaka, uh, and it's in Swift. For Android libraries, you have Smack. It's made by Ignite Realtime Community, and it's in Java, obviously. Retrofit is for the REST API part. It's Java as well, and made by Square. Wombat, Wombat OEM, is made by Erlang Solution. It's coded in Erlang, and it has wonderful and helpful Mongoose IAM plugins. Likewise, we will detail them later. And Escalus is the Erlang XMPP client that allows you to make functional automated tests. So we are saying that MongoDM platform is massively scalable. Indeed it is. For example, you can install it from a business card side or payment card side uh, size uh, machine, a very small machine. You can install MongoDM on a real powerful server. If you want to scale much, much more, we encourage you to install a cluster for fault tolerance, but also scalability. So you can deploy two machines, three machines, five, seven, and up to, up to a lot. Uh, and then if you want to scale even more, what you can do is deploy clusters in multiple data center all over the world so that uh, a cluster lives close to your user bases. Now, why would you add chat and social features uh, to your existing applications? Because, because basically these mechanics uh, increase uh, the value of your network. Uh, 
first you can add chat and then you allow your users to interconnect between them inside your application. Then what you can deliver is group chat so that you increase uh, their usage of the app. And then what you can offer is a social network on top of everything so that uh, all your users can communicate the way they want on your app for better acquisition because you have more features that attract them, for better retention because they will use the app every day, and for referral because of the network effect. They will attract more people. So here we go. Now let's dive into the more technical features and that's going to be the last slide I'm, I'm going to be talking and I will hand over soon. So why a REST API? Because, well, in the XMPP world and communities, it's, uh, it's not natural to talk about REST API because XMPP is connected in real time and REST is a much different paradigm. It's more polling and simplicity. So we identified a pain point uh, that is repeating over and over again. A lot of developers seem to find that XML and XMPP are too complex. Uh, it's for them too hard to learn and it's a big gap, to, it's a big leap. So we found out that XMPP developers are quite rare, but REST API developers are all over the planet. So we delivered XMPP and REST interfaces to MongoZIM. So you just choose what interface you want to use. And now I hand over to Ludwig. So we will detail you the technical features. Thank you, Nico. So basically, we divided our REST API feature into two parts, backend and client. Backend side is made mostly for third-party services in order to manage the server. It's usually run in local network, and this is mostly the admin stuff. So all things that admin can do with the server. For example, list uh, sessions, how many users are logged in, send message, send message on behavior of other users, create, destroy rooms. And for example, I like to do some load testing. I need to create 1000 dummy users. What I would do usually is to log in into Erlang shell, type some commands and create them completely manually. Uh, not anymore, we have this HTTP API service, we can do this remotely and then we can even automate this whole process because we can just write one request uh, in the scripts and then we can spawn instance of the uh, traffic, uh, client traffic generator and send requests in order to create those users. On the other hand, with the client side, those are all scenarios that user can do when he's logged in. It means that it requires authentication. It's done by HTTP basic auth mechanism. It's run over the internet, so it's uh, open for everyone. The purpose was to make easier to manage the client side for mobile web uh, developers because they know the HTTP better than XMPP. The most basic chat use cases for client side is send one to one message, send group chat, get the key story of the room. Uh, it's simple in development and maintenance and additionally the important thing uh, about this feature is the documentation. If you know guys some other documentations like OpenSSL, uh, it sucks. So documentation can be done cool and can be done wrong. Our documentation is cool, it's beautiful. For example, we have implementation notes, we have response status of the request. We can see even the example uh, request, example response and uh, interesting part of this documentation is that we can even try it out and then it will generate us the CURL command, Unix command. Uh, it's done in Swagger uh, and the, our modules for REST API in Erlang are done with Cowboy Library and the important thing is that you can enable or disable modules uh, for some features. For example, we can disable module responsible for sending message to the group chat or for the creating of creating of rooms etc okay the second big feature that comes with uh, mangozm 2.00 is maclite what is maclite it's lighter version of mac so what is mac 
Mac it's open standard and uh, this is about multi-user chat. If you go to the extension page you can see that it's quite a big. It has more than six and a half thousand of lines. Uh, I would call it even a big empire in the XCPP world. Anyway, it's about chatting in a room. So let's assume that you have created a room, you have invited your friends uh, and you've talked with them for a while. Even though you are subscribed to a room, every time you want to enter it once again, you have to send packet, which is called presence, to a room. And every time you want to leave it, you have to send presence with type unavailable to a room. So, every time you want to enter a room, send packet. Every time you leave, you have to send packet. Having been uh, subscribed, it's not enough. You can say, okay, I can send as many packets as you wish because uh, I have infinite band wire connection in my home, Ethernet and five routers, etc. It's not a problem for my desktop application. It might be a problem for your mobile application because uh, having a mobile, we constantly lose our connection. For example, you go for a walk to a tunnel or you visit your favorite elevator, etc. Fly. You constantly lose connection and then it means server will send the presence with type unavailable to every occupant of the room so that they know that you have left the room. If you want to join it once again, you have to send presence once again. Uh, lots of applications don't have bookmarks and auto joins mechanism, so this is one of the problems. Uh, this empire strikes again when we talk about presence broadcasting. You send presence to a room when you joined. This packet will be broadcasted to every member of the room and in response you will have presence of every member of the room. So this is quite a big bandwidth consumption and we call it noise pollution. Once I did qu quick math. Uh, example, we have 1000 members in the room. The, uh, I measured the size of the presence, presence, it's more than 300 bytes. And having in mind that every occupant leaves the room and joined uh, once per 10 minutes, it seems that user will receive more than five and a half megabytes per hour. And this is just leaving and entering room. So it's not even chatting. The third thing about legacy implementation is its complexity. We have roles, so you can be moderator or visitor. There are reserved, locked and anonymous rooms. I haven't used that. There are direct and mediated invitations, so you can send invitation directly to someone or ask the room to invite. You have private messages, so you have group chat but have private messages also, etc. So the conclusion is that we had to invent something new. So, gentlemen, welcome to the Maglight. The first rule of the Maglight is you do not talk about presences. The second rule of the Maglight is you do not talk about presences because we completely got rid of the presences, we don't need them. The third rule Someone still spams, disturb, and noise. The chat is over. You can simply block him with built-in blocking feature. The fourth rule. Only two types of affiliations. Member and owner. The fifth rule. One chat at a time. So there are no private messages. Six. No roles, no nicks. The seventh rule. The room will go on as long as it has to. When, some, one, when one of the nodes dies, the room will still exist. I will explain in a minute. The eighth and final rule. If this is your first time in the room, you have to be invited. You can't just join it on your own. So here is a little bit a uh, practice of Erlang. Uh, we have old legacy implementation in MOOC and MOOC Lite compared. Our, dis our connections of users are represented by processes in Erlang, as everything in Erlang. And room are also represented by processes. When someone sent message to room, the user process sent message to the room and then it's broadcasted to uh, other connections of users. In our MOOC Lite implementation, we got rid of the room process and messages are sent in context of user process. So, uh, I have two graphs here, one of for MOOC Lite and the second for uh, the legacy implementation. We store our uh, configuration of users and participants in Mnesia. It's distributed database over all nodes. In old legacy implementation we stored the rooms as the processes, as I explained uh, before, and this whole processes were stored on node. So in a case if uh, one of the nodes dies, 
we lose the room processes in Legacy implementations and it's not so easy to restore the process and invite the people to the room. Uh, this is not a problem for MOOCLite because uh, when it's stored in the database the configuration will be still existing in the node 1 and 2. Also, of course, we have support for uh, client side. We contributed to SMAC library for Android and iOS XMPP framework. So we represent you the server and client side for Mac Lite. The one thing more about 2.00 is PubSub. Nico, could you do some uh, introduction to PubSub? Exactly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ludwig. So, uh, perhaps maybe you know what it is, but why? Why is more importantly why? Because a lot of our uh, customer, a lot of the people we are addressing, want to innovate, to invent, kind of. Uh, they want to add more features to their uh, application, to, to the chat experience, uh, because they want to increase their traction and overall their income, I believe. Uh, so yes, um, the PubSub is a generic pattern, a design pattern. What we are showing now uh, is we are delivering the whole thing, but we are showing a simple use case. Imagine that instead of struggling and having painful uh, journey trying to innovate, you just add a very simple touch of social to your application. That would be only to post uh, simple articles and also for your friends to be able to comment on these articles. Overall, uh, it is quite clear that uh, these features will increase your application usage by uh, the users and also it will increase the network effect. Uh, here is a sample application. Uh, this is Movim once again. So on the left uh, screenshot, uh, there is a list of publications, and uh, on the left, on the right panel, there is this uh, wonderful picture of us. That's me, Kasha, and Michal at the bus, uh, the Paris Open Source Summit last week. So we did that publication on Movim. Uh, it's available on the web, um, and it's on XMPP. On the second screenshot, it's just the same uh, view, but on the Android application. And then the third screenshot is back to a browser. It's just a uh, uh, different shape and size. Uh, see below, there are two comments by Timothée Josselin and Nicolas Verité. Timothée Josselin is the creator of Movim, and Nicolas Verité, that's me. So this is a very simple use case that's in production. You can use it right now, and we still have uh, proof of concepts applications on iOS and Android that use that mechanism. That's called microblog. Up to you now, Ludwig. Okay, so more technical view of PubSarp pattern. In the center, we have a topic. Sometimes it's called node or channel. On the one hand, we have publishers that send data to this topic. And on the other side, we have subscribers. They are subscribed on topic and will asynchronously be notified when some data occurs uh, on the node. Basically, it's a quite a big deal. There are big applications like Twitter or YouTube or WordPress, uh, even Facebook, that use it. For example, on YouTube are the most uh, simple example. We have implementation of PubSub in Mangoes IM 2.00. Uh, we, of course, provide some tricky configurations. For example, you can have cache of last few uh, events on the node so that when new subscriber occurs, who will be notified about past recent uh, notifications. Additionally, we have extensions of extension of PubSub. One is uh, PubSub collection nodes, it's except uh, 248, and it works that way. You can have whole tree of nodes. And when you are subscribed of one of the children, and a publisher will send data to the parent node, uh, the children node also will uh, pass the data forward. So you can be subscribed on whole branch of nodes. The second extension is Personal Evening Protocol. It's 163 in XMPP. Uh, and it's quite simple. 
you have one node per uh, user and uh, one publisher, of course, is there per user in your roster. When something interesting happens in life of your friend, he will send this data to his node and all friends, all people in the roster will be notified about this. I have also compared group chat and PubSub implementations in this table. Firstly, tree structure. We have, as I explained before, tree structure in PubSub. We don't have it in group chat, so only flat namespace of rooms. Participant list. Of course, you have it in group chat and you can't know uh, other subscribers or other publishers in PubSub implementation. Administ administration. Yes, for group chat, no for PubSub. You can't manage notes uh, from subscriber point of view. Uh, interesting thing about the PubSub is that you can be notified about event, but you don't have to receive a whole payload. You can ask for it later. It's quite uh, interesting from uh, bandwidth point of view. You don't have such a feature in group chat. Presence, of course, this is only for legacy implementation of group chat. You have to send presence to the room. You don't have this in PubSub. The last thing regarding Mongoose IM 2.0.0 release are Wombat OIM plugins. Uh, what is Wombat? Wombat is a monitoring tool for airline-based products. It works that way, it connects through Erlang distributed to your node as a hidden node. And of course, you can simply add or remove nodes through cool Wombat OIM dashboard. It does a simple measurement of your Erlang virtual machine. For example, you can measure the size of Erlang processes queues, or you can run garbage collection. Those are just default functionalities. There are some more specific functionalities that are provided through plugins. There are plugins for RIAC, for Phoenix, for Cowboy Library, for uh, RabbitMQ, of course, and Mangoes IM. I'd like to focus on Mangoes IM plugin. The most important thing is that you can measure how many users there are online. You can check how many stanzas are sent per minute. You can check how many uh, authentication failures there are. You can even check how much time consumes uh, function execution. For example, checking uh, password on Mangoes IM site, how much time it takes. Additionally, you have services. Uh, you can check hosts that are registered on Mangoes AM node, and you can check uh, how many modules are enabled per host. Mm, additionally, you have alarms. So you can have an email in the middle of the night saying, hey, something is wrong on Mangoes AM, something crashes. So this is also a cool feature. Thank you uh, once again. And this is the last slide. Um, so there is more, of course. Uh, uh, over the course of the development of Mongoose IAM Platform 2.0.0, uh, we have run a lot of activities, and here are some of the valuable outcomes. Uh, we are doing continuous testing, uh, different kinds of testing. Of course, functional testing, it's available in Travis. Uh, continuous deployment, we have a staging server that is deployed and connected to S2S, meaning uh, federated with uh, the worldwide XMPP network. And also we have continuous load testing. It is still a work in progress and uh, keep connected because soon we, we are going to talk about it. So we believe that all these uh, advanced uh, testing brings much, much more quality to the product, and thus, you can trust even more that platform. On the documentation side as well, we have listened to, to you, and uh, some of the things were unclear. So we augmented our, our documentation. We detailed uh, the clustering, how to scale, what are the ar different architectures, uh, what are the different steps uh, in the scalability journey. Also, we have a little focus on databases uh, because you have two different types of databases that MongoZM uses. Uh, you have the transient data, uh, which can be stored in Indonesia or Redis, and you have the persistent data, which can be stored in many more databases, such as RDBNS, uh, relational databases, but also NoSQL databases, mainly React KV today, and soon maybe more. Um, 
Also, we have listed the contributions that we are making to the ecosystem. Obviously, the libraries uh, on iOS and Android, Snack for Android, and XMPP framework for iOS. And also, we have documented a potential roadmap. So, feel free to comment on everything. We would really would love to to hear back from you, from what you think about that, what you think is valuable to you, and what we can improve. So here it is. It is the end of this presentation. I believe that um, Mladen will take over. Mladen, up to you. Nicola, uh, Nicola and uh, Ludwig, first of all, thank you for a most inspiring uh, talk on uh, Mongoose IM. I think, uh, given that we're almost out of time, we should wrap up here, but I can um, solemnly promise to everyone who's asked uh, all the questions we couldn't answer that they will be answered in writing. Uh, so we will send you uh, emails with the answers to, to the questions you've asked. And again, apologies we couldn't answer them right now. Uh, I would just like to thank everyone for joining the webinar, uh, in particular uh, Nicola and Ludwig for obviously doing a fantastic talk on MongooseIM 2.0. I would just briefly like to mention that MongooseIM has indeed become a messaging platform of choice that is now widely used across social media, gaming, healthcare, financial services, sectors where you simply have a need for something robust, something that just works and that scales reliably and easily. Now, thank you all again for attending this particular webinar and do join us for the next webinar. I'll just point out briefly that we will send you a short survey to make sure that your feedback is captured from uh, today's session. Uh, the recording of this session will also be available on the Erlang Solutions corporate website, which is uh, located at www.erlang-solutions.com. Uh, so you, you're welcome to sort of take that there in the next couple of days. Uh, but above everything, uh, thank you all once again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar.